now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 6.06. It's O'Connor and Company here on this Monday morning of Thanksgiving week. Thanks for starting it off with us. Coming up at 7.05, Joe DeGeneva will be here. At 8.15, Trevor Maddich. And then at 8.35, Senator Rand Paul. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock back from a, a few days under the weather. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Good to be back. Thanks for being here. You feeling okay? Feeling great. You're doing jumping jacks during the break there. Are you sure you're allowed to do that? You're not going to yeah, break fine. anything or rip any stitches or anything <laughs> like that? All right. So on Friday, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson made good on his pledge, a pledge, by the way, it should be noted, that Kevin McCarthy also made but didn't actually make good on. Mm -hmm. And that was to release to the public for public viewing and public scrutiny from American taxpayers and citizens the security footage from inside the Capitol on January 6th. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is. He's made tons of the hours available online for you to review, and then there are also areas at the Capitol where you can go and make an appointment to review all of it. I'm told that upwards to 96% of all of it has been released. There are some areas that uh, Speaker Johnson agreed were too sensitive yep, in terms security of security areas. Security yep, yep, areas, yep. but m most of the places. Here's what's critically important about this, and the entire narrative around the release of these videos have to circle around one item and one item only the january 6th committee and what they withheld what they refused to show the public if this committee was about getting to the truth and revealing the facts to the american people they failed miserably and deliberately deliberately, deliberately. absolutely it's they despicable. did not do what they said they were doing it is despicable because they said that that all of this video that has just been released was too sensitive mm -hmm, for the American mm -hmm, people to mm -hmm. see. They said that everything that was a Speaker concern. Johnson yep. put out is a security concern. And the fact, it, it's it's a lie. If anything, they were just you know angry that the unwashed masses would be able to see their hallowed corridors. That's exactly right. Yep. That only they're allowed to walk through. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. That's they, they only wanted to release video of people walking in public areas that were accessible to the public because they don't want us to see the special tunnels that they're allowed to walk they through. They also didn't it's want BS. to see that many of the people walked into open doors held open by Capitol Police. And I'm not criticizing the Capitol Police here, but there is an optics problem. We, you know how the Democrats well, always like to say everything's complicated? Right. Well, they didn't want it to be complicated. They wanted to say every protester was violent and insane and rushing through and um, attacking police officers. There is a lot of footage here that shows people just kind of wandering through the Capitol and, in fact, talking to police officers, being led around by police officers. This really interrupts that narrative. Well, and that is a, a big part of this story that, that sort of tangentially goes off of the fact that the January 6th committee deliberately withheld yep. the truth from the American people. And by the, and we're not saying the truth is nothing happened on no, January 6th. Right. Clearly, some bad stuff happened on January 100%. 6th. And some of the bad people that did bad stuff should have been arrested and should have been convicted of crimes. There's also a lot of stuff that happened on January 6th that wasn't as well, bad as they said it was. One, and a lot of people who got arrested who were completely framed and set up and shouldn't uh, have been arrested. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I feel bad for getting his name right now, but one of them agreed to a plea deal. They then added on a terrorism charge so he would have faced many more years, and he hung himself. They now have the video of him sort of walking around with his camera, looking— he, this right. was not a terrorist. No, this when, was not a violent man, and it drove him to suicide. We need to we need to grapple with what happened on Liz Cheney's show trial, right? Um, and how they hid this. And you mentioned the Capitol Police, and and some Capitol Police do deserve criticism, specifically those who profited, the ones who testified and then profited yep. by this. Because, books. listen, they told their story under oath, but other Capitol Police officers were not allowed or That's even right. asked That's to tell right. their story, like those Capitol Police officers that we see on the videos who were fist bumping the people who were yep. walking in, being friendly. I'm sorry. I just think in the United States of America, if a police officer is holding open a door for you to be able to come walk through 
to the United States Capitol, which is open to the public. Yes. And he's fist bumping you and being friendly with you. You shouldn't be arrested for walking through that right. door. And you certainly shouldn't be charged with terrorism. Yeah. So that's what these videos show us. Now, again, to be clear, there were some people who did bad things that day. We've seen those videos. That's all we've seen is the violence that occurred outside and in that tunnel and some of the bad things that occurred. But we haven't seen any of this. And the vast majority of the people's behavior, it appears that day inside the Capitol, was not the deadly, life-threatening insurrection that is the greatest threat to our country since 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. In any by any stretch of the imagination. All right. And again, you know, you just, I mean, we we've seen some protests over the last couple of weeks um, from these sort of pro Hamas organizations yeah. on government buildings, on police, um, assaulting police. And there has not been the reaction. Uh, that we had January 6th. I mean, again, this is sort of this two-tiered system. This is, you know, the the hypocrisy we see on the left that they, um, you know, are easily angered by anything done on the right, and yet they stay silent on things on the left. I mean, again, we don't need to relitigate that. But it does add to the frustration. And now these videos showing, and again, a, very, a much more complicated, I'm just using the words of the left here that they love to say, it's complicated, it's nuanced. Well, in this case it is, but that nuance was never allowed into the conversation with Liz Cheney's hearings. None of this was allowed to be considered, and it was kept from the American public. And that is shameful, and there are a lot of people sitting in jail right now, some still waiting for trial, um, that right. essentially already been convicted in the in the in with the media well, and in the court of public opinion. Because... This entire show trial was not about the people who stormed into the Capitol. It wasn't about the people who slowly strolled into the Capitol with the Capitol Police's support. It wasn't even about the Capitol Police officers who did feel a lot of stress at the breaking point because of bad management, bad security, bad decisions from Nancy Pelosi, bad decisions by D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. Uh, no, it wasn't about any of that. You know what it was about? Of course we know what it was about. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections. It's about that man. Mm -hmm. And it's about either keeping him from being eligible to run for president with these outrageous 14th Amendment attempts that have been shot down now three for three, Minnesota, Michigan, and on Friday in Colorado. It's about that, or it's about making the American people feel like if they support that man, they might as well be busting windows and 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 pushing against cops and part of the insurrection from January 6th. It's about him. That's what it's about. And it appears, based on what you just heard from President Trump and based on watching the videos, the vast, vast, vast majority of the people on the Capitol January 6th did exactly what Donald Trump said they should do, peacefully and patriotically patriotically make your way to the Capitol. All right, so what's next now? The videos are out there. What difference at this point does it make? Well, Senator Mike Lee had something to say about that, and we'll tell you what. It might actually leave a mark. We'll tell you in a moment, but first at 6.15, WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes first. Mail. Making sense of the news. Live. Live from the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Support our wounded warriors during the Fisher House Radiothon November 30th and December 1st. Visit WMAL.com slash Fisher House. The January 6th committee has just been caught cold, orchestrating a massive illegal cover-up. Trump is headed for trial next year for January 6th related charges, and he's going to have subpoena power, which gives him the right to access critical documents and videos pertaining to the time period. That means the January 6th committee, whose two-year investigation produced thousands and thousands of documents, transcript, and hours and hours of deposition videos, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will be legally required to turn over whatever materials Trump requests. And as you know, primetime does not believe in coincidences. Yesterday, we uncovered the January 6th committee has destroyed almost 50% of their evidence. That was Jesse Waters reporting on a story that we told you about a few months ago as well, where it was discovered that that committee destroyed 
over half of the evidence that wow. they had collected on taxpayer dime for their very important special. I mean, you would think they would want to keep all of that evidence for the archives to tell this historic story to generations to come that we almost lost our country on January 6th. Yeah. And yet they destroyed it all. I wonder why. You mm. add to that what has now been revealed by Mike Johnson. Uh, putting this out here, Speaker of the House, and you see a concerted effort to not reveal the facts of January 6th to the American people, but to craft it and orchestrate it and mold it to tell a story. Uh, I mean, they literally hired a TV producer That's right. from well, ABC time to put together that, that hearing. Yeah. Uh, so Senator Mike Lee took to X.com and called specifically for an investigation into the January 6th committee said the lawmakers who formed that committee deliberately hid footage of the Capitol riots to the, from the American people. He said they deliberately hid this from us, and that, that means it needs to be investigated. And I think this will actually go places. I think that I hope Mike Johnson will do this. Again, Speaker McCarthy promised to have these hearings, and I know that they've got a lot on their plate, but they need to actually come clean on everything. Just releasing the video is not enough. You could see panic out there on X from some of the sort of the, the January 6th, um, you know, conviction pushers. Uh, Liz Cheney, yeah. um, Adam Kinzinger, some of them were really uh, bothered by the release of this footage. And Liz Cheney in particular was quite active on X posting the same videos we've seen over and over again of the violence, which no one is denying. Right. No one denies that there were bad actors, that there was uh, you, you know, people who went too far, people that did resort to violence. There were Capitol Police officers that were attacked. Nobody denies this. So she posted this and everyone was like, yeah, Liz, we've seen that footage. We're talking about the new yeah. footage, which you kept hidden. In fact, let me read his tweet back to Liz Cheney. I, I do like it when they talk to each other on social media media. Liz, we've seen footage like that a million times. Yeah. You made sure we saw that and nothing else. Mm -hmm. It's the other stuff, what you deliberately hid from us that we find so upsetting. Nice try. P.S. How many of these guys are feds as if you'd yeah. ever tell us? Well, that's the other thing. We still can't get a straight answer from Christopher Ray about how many people uh, involved that day were actually informants or in, even members of the yep. intelligence community or the, the federal law enforcement. And there is one quite startling video of a person dressed up in civilian clothes with a MAGA hat on who is taken Charge. aside by police. No, this guy oh. is taken aside by the police. They take his handcuffs off. He was escorted out in handcuffs. Really? You haven't seen this? No. They take his handcuffs off of him. They pat him on the back. They let him walk away, and he takes the cuffs with him. No. Yeah, that's what I saw. <laughs> I didn't see that. I thought you were talking about Ray Epps. Oh, good old Ray Epps. Yeah, that's uh, that's another great wow, part of the story. So yeah. we'll Who's see. That guy? We'll see where this where this heads. There needs to be a, a full investigation, and and it needs to be put out there. And Not frankly, there needs to be an investigation of the police, of the Capitol police officers who went up on Capitol Hill, who have profited from this, who have written books, who are at you know Hollywood parties. They are living the life, and I think there needs to be a little bit of scrutiny. On those guys as well. Yeah. And uh, and what's next and how does that investigation go? Well, we got a couple of people who might be able to help us answer that question. Uh, we've got Joe DeGeneva coming up at 7.05. And then at 8.35, we've got Rand Paul. Nice. Who also, I think, will have something to say about it. And he usually agrees with Mike Lee on a lot of things. Uh, plus, a little bit more investigation that Julie Kelly has done. Of course, she's been one of the journalists who has been trying to give a counter-narrative to the events of January 6th. She's looked at these videos, and we want to share something uh, that she observed as well coming up in a moment. Right now at 621. I know everybody's saying, oh, great, Mike Lee wants to have Senate hearings. Well, that's all we can do right now is congressional hearings because we don't have the Justice Department that actually looks for the truth for things. All mm -hmm. we can do is a hearing, but we need to do that at the very least. Yes, we do. That's what the left did when they had the January 6th hearings. Uh, we need to do more in terms of telling the real story that's coming out here. Um, uh, Julie Kelly has taken a look at this. There's been a lot here. There is video footage now of something that Julie's been reporting on. The Capitol Police fired tear gas into the crowd that day. Um, without any warning or without any announcement. That footage is now there to see. There's also uh, footage of all, a lot of the people who went into the rotunda there who had been let in to peacefully walk in and weren't doing anything. 
Uh, the cops decided it was time. to. They didn't say, get out. You're not supposed to be here. There were no announcements made. They just went in and started rounding people up pretty physically uh, that you can see from the video. Whether that's appropriate police uh, uh, procedure or not, it sure doesn't look like it. It certainly wasn't employed against the George Floyd riots yeah. in Lafayette Square. Also some additional coverage or video of Ashley Babbitt and her body being removed. Fascinatingly, uh, when someone dies, usually there's forensics that comes in and analyzes the scene. She was just sort of dragged off the pool of blood, just sort of let uh, to to sit there. Um, so that's kind of an interesting tidbit of information, too. Jonah Goldberg. Oh, God. Do we have to? The only real conservative left in the room. Yes, the principled one. He took a look at it and said, I honestly don't get how the nonviolent footage from January 6th matters very much. Unbelievable. Sure, maybe it exposes some interesting tidbits that got undercovered, as Um, he puts it. Interesting tidbits. But if I see a film of World War II troops playing cards and napping, I'm not like, oh, my God, they didn't do any fighting. You can't be serious. That's what he tweeted. So so there you have that. What time did he tweet that? Was he drunk? (laughs) No, 7.50 in the morning. Could have been drunk. Over the weekend. <laughs> there you have that. All right, coming up, that thing that transgender activists keep telling us will never happen, you know, a boy going and dominating women's sports, it happened again. Oh, weird. Twice last week. We'll tell you about it next. WMAL FM, Woodbridge, Washington. A cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 637. It's O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here on this Monday morning of Thanksgiving week. Are you brining? Do you brine? Do you ever brine, Julie Gunlock? I have. And yeah. it's, boy, it's a great way to go. To go. If you're it's brining bit, your bird, a bit of a mess. it should be in now. You want yes. to get it brined and then out I always and love, then drained. I always and, love the people who like stick their turkey, frozen turkey in the fridge the night before. Oh, yeah. That's a bad idea. Yeah. You're ordering out. I like the people who stick their frozen turkey in the deep fryer with it. No, don't do that. <laughs> That'll explode. You don't oh. want to do that. Coming up at 7.05, Joe DeGeneva, 8.15, Trevor Maddich, and 8.35, Senator Rand Paul. Julie Gunlock there, Larry O'Connor here. And, you know, we've uh, as we've been raising the alarm for years now about the transgender activists introducing males into high school and collegiate sports. Female sports, yep. There's uh, Female sports, thank you. There's a, a ton of reasons why this is a bad idea, and it's unsafe for young women and girls. Uh, lots of the, the locker rooms, the missed opportunities, the scholarships, the all of those things. But the physical danger is really Risk of injury, yes. probably the most uh, alarming thing. And we've seen lots of examples of that, including a boy who plays on a field hockey team in Massachusetts where somebody, a, a girl, lost her teeth with a slap shot. Yeah. Now, in Massachusetts, it's interesting, they passed a law back in, I think it was 79 or 80, that allowed boys to play on girls' sports and girls to play on boys' sports. This is well before the transgender thing. This mm-hmm. is a boy who identifies as a boy. And I think that the the idea behind it was back then, feminist activists were like, you know, um, why can't a girl play on a football team, right? right? You right. know, and, and, and so they passed this law, and now it's being exploited by boys That's who right. play. And But we keep being told by trans activists and by gay activists and so-called feminists who don't really seem to care about women that, oh, you're just raising alarms over something that never happens. It's never happening. And it's, of course, with Leah Thomas, we saw it happen. And there were various different examples. And this last week, we saw two new examples of it happening. This thing that we're told never happens keeps happening. That's Julie. right. That's right. And in some sports, like swimming, where Leah Thomas was in his own lane, um, there isn't necessarily a risk of physical danger, although it's incredibly concerning that Leah Thomas was changing, was naked in front of these girls. But right. at, at least in the sport itself, when it comes to swimming, there's a little less danger of actual physical harm. But we have volleyball players, male volleyball players, slamming balls into girls' faces at a speed that breaks their faces. We have we saw in in Massachusetts recently with the lacrosse game, the field I'm sorry, hockey. field hockey yeah. game, a girl getting her teeth knocked out by right. a male player. 
it is really scary in these contact sports and what's happening to these young women. And here's another example in Massachusetts, a boy who plays on the girls' volleyball team where my son played volleyball in California. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a much bigger sport on the West Coast than it is on the East Coast. This boy wants to play volleyball. He doesn't have an opportunity because there's no boys' team, so he's going to play on the girls' team. The net for girls' volleyball is seven and a half inches shorter than in boys' volleyball. I think that matters? There is that video matters. here where he, he doesn't even have to jump. Right. To get the ball off over the net. And at one point, you know how players sort of trash talk across the net sometimes to each other? He was trash talking with a girl across the net and said, did my, um, the, his male genitalia, did my male genitalia distract you? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and, th- and how is that not harassment, sexual right. harassment against a That's young girl? That's chilling. And it's allowed. And then there's this one. There's a swimmer, another swimmer. Uh, in Ramapo College, Ramapo College, New Jersey, uh, he was, as Riley Gaines put it, who is an activist here with Independent Women's Forum, uh, he was a mediocre male swimmer, now swimming with the women's team as a transgender identified woman and is smashing records against women. Mm. Um, and it's, so it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and it's obscene. But I got to tell you, as we keep trying to have the theme of today's show is there's got to be some good out there, right? There's got to be some positive news. On this issue in particular, as soon as the American people see the facts and the results of this policy, the pendulum is swinging. More people are now on the side of keeping men out of women's sports. And even Saturday Night Live went there this weekend. Yeah, pretty amazing stuff. Sort of. They didn't go there with regard to transgender Identity, they close. but sh- they went there in terms of the ridiculous nature of men playing in women's sports. This is a, a faux documentary they put up. It's been 50 years since Billie Jean King defeated Bobby Riggs in the Battle of the Sexes. She shocked the world and stood up to misogyny in the tennis community. But what if I told you she wasn't the first? Another victory for Sharna Lee Diamond. There'd be no Billie without Sharna. There she- just wouldn't be. She taught girls... You didn't need to play safe. This is for women! She was a brash feminist icon, but the world wasn't ready for that. Ms. Diamond! Ms. Diamond! Ms. Diamond! Ms. Diamond, what do you say to the men telling you there's no place for girls in this sport? If any men out there think they have what it takes to beat me, let's play. No more uh, questions. All right. So they set up this. She was the first one before Billie Jean King, right? So she picks a man to play against. It's uh, played by actor Jason Momoa, who, <laughs> who is, you know, Aquaman. <laughs> I mean, kind of a big guy. Just a giant hulk of a man. <laughs> and that sets up in a, a, uh, a pretty gruesome scene here. Sharna found an opponent, the biggest star in men's tennis, Ronnie Dunster. Emphasis on big. I feel like I was an odd choice for Shauna because at the time I was the largest man to ever play tennis. <laughs> All eyes are on the Houston Astrodome tonight to witness this historic match. And here comes the first serve. All right, so what happened there is the tennis ball <laughs> off the serve actually plows through through her abdomen, yes. creating a in, an actual hole yes. in her body. Yes, it's, yes. It's actually really gruesome. But it's <laughs> but so over the, the top thing. gruesome, it's funny. And the, and, but then she gets up and she says, come on, this is this is bigger than tennis. <laughs> this is for women everywhere. And the next serve literally takes her head off. Yes. And it's hilarious. It's all hilarious, but you get what they're saying. Yes, it's funny because and it's this true. Is the thing. This is the thing. You mentioned these males that identify as trans and then go... They're they're average. These are not great athletes. But even not great athletes can cause great damage when you consider their physical strength over their female opponents. That's right. And when universities and other uh, you know athletic programs allow this, you know it's like uh, you know allow these males, these average men, to come in and take these women's. It's a danger to girls. We need to remember that. And this SNL place. Good for them. The they, fact that it got past the writer's room and the producers <laughs> yeah. and they actually put it on the air tells you that the conversation it has started. shifted a bit. Yes, yeah. yes. Thanks to us. 
It's, right. It's 644. If you want Donna Brazil, remember, I, I actually, I, I, I like Donna Brazil just in the fact that she's a hard drinking sort of tell it like it is. Mm-hmm. I, I disagree with her politics and I think that she's a dirty uh, cheater. Cheater. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. A hundred percent. But I just, if you listen to her audiobook of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign, it's hilarious. Sure, sure. Because, you know, they threw her in as DNC chairwoman after they got rid of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Yeah. And she was, it, she, her, her chronicle of that election is just funny. The sure. fact that she just, you know, progressively you. picked harder liquor and harder liquor every month. <laughs> she hated the people who ran the campaign for sure. Hillary up in Brooklyn. And, yeah. and anyway, Donna Brazil. Largely it, insufferable, though. 100% insufferable. And she appeared on Bill Maher's show there, the uh, mm-hmm. the equal time thing that he does. And um, t- she's got a thing with Vivek Ramaswamy. Mm-hmm. Now, now I got to be honest, you know, it took us a couple of goes to make sure we could pronounce his name right. But our, we're paid to the go Vivek. on the air and call it's Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah. Think of cake. Vivek That's like right. cake. He's He's gone out of his way. He's been in the public conversation for a year now, if not more. And you know, I used to mispronounce somebody else's name. Mm-hmm. I used to say Desanctus. Oh, you did? You used to say Desanctus. Yeah. That's where Trump got the idea of Desanctimonious, I think. Sure, yeah. It was me. Anyway, and you remember, listen, uh, uh, pronouncing names that are not common for now. Like Donna is an easy name to pronounce yeah. for Donna Brazil. Yeah. Kamala is not. Remember when people would pronounce it Kamala? Yeah. Like Tucker Carlson? I think I still do. And he was called racist for that? Right. Well, listen to Donna Brazil, who was also, he, she's on TV. Her job now is to be on TV and talk about politics. Right. Her job, just like ours, is to pronounce someone's name correctly. And she doesn't. Over and over again, she doesn't pronounce purpose. Vivek's name correctly. Right. right. Bill Maher called her on on it. And Vivek needs to just shut the hell up and go home. I'm tired of <laughs> Go home is also. We all hate Vivek. Go back where you came okay. from. Yep. It's it's Vivek. Vivek. Well, whatever. Not that I have, whatever. 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 Would, would you would you say that about uh, other? Donna, ethnic? I'm Donna. Vivek. Is it Vivek Ramasama? <laughs> Ramaswamy? Vive- Ramaswamy. Thank yeah. you so much. I, I know, learn but, so much when I come on this show. I know. But... <laughs> Vivek. 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 Vivek needs I, to I, go I, home. I, I, yeah. look, I, 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 go home. I agree. Wow. He, he runs it. He, I, just, yeah. I just feel like there's something wrong with everybody refusing to learn to say his name. Vivek. Okay, I just feel I there's a little racism there. <laughs> there's no just racism. a little. Okay. Vivek, Vivek, I'll say it. Vivek. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm saying it's just, it's like, I know we don't like him, but, you know, just say his name right. Yeah, so if you pronounce Barack Obama's name wrong, oh, dear. do you think people might say that you're a racist? Yeah, you think. Or I, if you said I, he I, should go home. Go or, home. Or, oh, Barack Which is home? a Barack? Where, Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, is yeah. he too brown for you, yeah, Donna? Apparently. Is his home not in America? Mm. That seems to be. 